Thank you again to EA and the Creator Network for making this video possible. While playing Jedi Survivor last week, this was the video I was most excited to make. We knew the customization for this game was going to be better than what we had in Jedi Fallen Order, but I don't think we were prepared, at least I know I wasn't, for just how much love and consideration was put into this aspect of the game. So let's talk about it. I can't tell you the joy on my face when I opened one of the first chests on my playthrough and found a beard cosmetic for Cal. I think I even did a little fist pump when I realized that it was all real. This inspired me to finally click into the cosmetic menu, and what I found was absolutely overwhelming, but in a good way. There are so many interchangeable pieces in the cosmetics for this game. There are 200 plus cosmetic options in this game just for Cal that I'm aware of. 14 different hairstyle options, 13 different beard slash mustache options, not including clean shaven, 19 jacket options with a potential of six color options for each, 10 shirt options with a potential for six color options for each, and 10 pants options with, like the others, six color options for each. There's a lot to find out in the world, and I'm not even sure if these numbers include the cosmetics you get with the pre-order or the deluxe version of this game. This really lets you create your own version of Cal Kestis, whether you want him to have a mullet and a goatee, or wear his scrapper uniform and hairstyle from the first game, the power is entirely in your hands, and I think that's super cool. While you find a lot of these cosmetics in chests around the map while you adventure, you can also buy Cal cosmetics from shops like the one Doma owns in Rambler's Reach. The next customization I want to discuss is that of Cal's lightsaber. You start the game with your full double blades that you can mix and match each part of separately. From the left emitter, switch, grip, and pommel, to the right grip, switch, and emitter, you can change it all separately. Each component has 19 different parts you can find throughout your adventures, and the ones that we see in the video are gorgeous. I can't wait to find more around the map. Next, let's talk about the blade options. You start off the game being able to choose between nine blade color options. Blue, green, purple, yellow, cyan, pink slash magenta, indigo, orange, and the new color for this game, white. I didn't notice an option where you could change the blade colors for each of your different sabers separately, so I assume that your whole saber has to be the same color. Finally, let's talk about saber metal. Unlike the last game where you chose a medal and it covered the entire saber, this game allows you a lot more freedom when it comes to what color you want everything to be, letting you choose a separate medal for the main color, secondary color, and accent color for your saber from different medal options, of which there are many, and they can be found throughout chests in addition to the components. A slider is also provided that allows you to choose how polished or dull you want your saber to look while you play. That's all for saber customization, but now last but not least, BD1 customization. I know I'm a sucker for BD1's default look and color, but in Survivor, you could truly build your own BD unit to travel around the galaxy with. You can switch out many different parts of BD from his photoreceptors or eyes, which changes the front of his face to the shape and the look of his head. You can also change his audio sensors slash ears, as well as his main body and the look of his legs. This gives you the chance to make an entirely different looking droid while still keeping the main shape and charm of our favorite droid BD. You can also change BD1's coloring, and just like the sabers, unlike in Fallen Order, you can choose multiple metals to make BD1 look just the way you'd like. BD1 uses the same material color options as your lightsaber, allowing you to choose between so many color options to choose BD's main, secondary, and accent coloring. You can also choose how worn you want BD to look, from being shiny and new to old and worn. The world is your oyster when it comes to customizing your favorite droid buddy. So there you go. There's a basic rundown of the major cosmetic customization we'll be getting in Jedi Survivor. It's very extensive, and you can really tell the love and care that was put into every aspect of it while you mess around with all of the options. I know I love the stunning user interface and animation that the devs put into this aspect of the game, and I can't wait to see what other components and outfits we get for Cal, BD-1, and our lightsaber as we adventure through the galaxy. Which cosmetic customization option are you most excited to mess around with? Let me know down in the comments. And I still have so many more videos to post about my experience playing Jedi Survivor, so if you want to stay up to date with my coverage, please hit the subscribe button down below. 
And as always, thank you for watching. May the force be with you. Goodbye.